everybody, Tom here with Permaculture Wilmington. I, uh, I have some wine that's ready to be bottled. It's coffee peppermint wine that I've been I've had fermented for about four months now. And we tried it yesterday when my buddy came over, a special occasion kind of thing. I decided to just crack the bottle and see how it's going. And uh, everybody gave it two thumbs up. It is really, really good. Uh, more of a dessert wine, currently at about 7% alcohol, and has more of a port consistency in terms of sugar. But the flavor of the coffee mint is is just I've never experienced it before. It's not coffee, and it's not it, well. It does it tastes a little bit like mint, but it's definitely not a coffee flavor. It's almost like a mocha, um, but it's just really really good. So we're gonna bottle it up and take care of it, put it in a safe spot, leave it for another month or so if it lasts that long. Everything that I do, I have a system for. So uh, I've just developed the system for cleaning bottles, and I thought I'd share it with you. So here we go. Um, usually what I do is, if there's anything in the bottom currently, is I fill it up just a little bit in the bottom, swish it around to get the residuals out, just like so, and then I squirt a couple drops of star sand in here. This is star sand, if you guys know about this, it's a fermentation uh, cleaner, it's actually a mild acid, as you can see there's acid right here on the label. It takes about 15 seconds to clean once it's applied to the surface. So you have to wait 15 seconds, and then in that 15 seconds, all the microbiology that's on the surface um, will begin to die in the acid. So what we're going to do is just spray a couple, a couple squirts in there is what I do, just like so. Just two or three pumps is good. And I always make sure that I spray the lid because a lot of the, uh, the the yeast will actually accumulate on the while it's fermenting in the bottle. The yeast will accumulate right here on this rubber piece. Um, on the seal and when it comes in contact with air it forms a white coating Saccharomyces cerevisia alright guys and uh, this is one of the better ones for doing wine I like this one and I like the champagne yeast um, but they're all they're, they're both Saccharomyces is the strain of fungi that we're using here a yeast uh, specifically a yeast fungus so that's what we're doing and when we put it in the bottle it creates wonderful wonderful wine Most important thing is not to shake this up like I just did. And we won't, but when we put this in and you're doing it by yourself, we have to figure out a way to get it to sit off the bottom so that it doesn't disturb all that sediment. So this is what I usually do is use a rubber band, just like that. And that will keep it from disturbing the sediment in the bottom. We don't want to get this mixed up into our juice uh, into our wine or ferment, whatever we're doing, because that's going to change our flavor profile. We don't want that. Um, this is all the dead yeast and uh, just sediment, like uh, the things they ate. If they ate the caffeine and there was a byproduct, it would be settling down in the bottom. If they ate any organics in the glass, it would be settling down to the bottom. So uh, this is all the, the organic material that we don't want in our ferment. So. Uh, just don't disturb it is the trick. Okay, and everything looks good. I don't have any star sand in there. My hands are really clean. I've washed them several times, um, and I've got star sand all over them the past few minutes on multiple occasions. So um, this is a uh, bottling wand. So this, you just push it in the bottom of the bottle, and it releases the liquid through here once you get it primed. Hold it to the bottom and press. So that little, that little pin down here has to be pressed in order for you to pump this and liquid come through. So we're just going to, it's tricky to do this by yourself, I'm not going to lie. But, um, we're just going to press right here, and then just a couple, like so. going filling up our bottles if you want to see there we go now it's got to be lower than that for gravity to work so but as long as it's lower it'll keep coming out and the reason for doing this is because we don't want to pour it and mix the oxygen in if we want to continue fermenting it because if we do we're going to get the bacteria in there 
that, um, that are associated with vinegar. We just go from one to the other and try not to contaminate. We don't want to touch the wand after we start doing this or gen in general. The only reason I did that was because I already had star sand on. Uh, and I use this, uh, I use a pot so that the bottles don't shift and move around on me. So again, just filling it up. Hope everybody's having a good day. And again, this is mint coffee wine, guys. This is some of the best flavor I've had from a coffee wine. Is is taking the mint, just a big handful of fresh mint, and and uh, doing a light boil, like basically making a mint tea with just the tea leaves. So you, you boil the water and then you drop the tea leaves in. Um, and once you drop the tea leaves in, it, you only only let it uh, steep for about 10 minutes. So you turn the heat off, just like you do with with a uh, with tea. Just turn the eye off and then slide the pot right off the eye and then put the mint in and then just let the mint steep um, and you can bruise it if you want to I don't so you know you can use a mortar, mortar and pestle and just uh, kind of bruise all the foliage before you do it but I haven't really noticed a difference and that we made lots of gallons of this it goes quick it goes real quick if I make something I share it and that's just how I am I got a couple gallons to do, so I decided to bring you along for the journey. This is also mint coffee wine. I usually fill it up to the, the line right here, um, so that way when I take out the wand, it drops just a little bit to leave enough headroom for the gas exchange in the top, what little bit is going to happen in the bottle. And I would like a little carbonation, so I leave it just a little bit. This has sugar in it still, so I'm not going to back sweeten it, but if I wanted uh, carbonation and had fermented this all the way past the point of no more sugar being in the, the ferment, then at that point um, I would put a, a tablespoon of sugar in the bottom of the bottles. Probably more like a teaspoon, actually. I don't really measure. I just put like a take a spoon, a regular spoon that we eat with at the table, um, not a big soup spoon, but just a re regular tablespoon, and I just spoon it in. But I remember the yeast are going to eat it, so it's not an exact science, and we don't know how many yeast are in, in the bottle, so there is no selling without proper testing equipment, which I don't have. just noticed that when I clean the bottles, this lid still has a little bit of that um, yeast residue on it, so just need to get that off because the white stuff that you see does have a flavor. It has a distinct flavor that's not so good. So if you guys ever ferment peppers and do like a, a lacto-ferment with peppers, um, where you just blend it up and basically keep it in its own juice and put it on the table and kind of stir it every day and, and it just kind of settles underneath the solution. Um, it, or just kind of settles, then uh, a lot of times you'll get like a buildup of that white film on top, and you, you know what I'm talking about, because it's got a flavor to it. I thought you guys might like to see the last bottle that I did, like how cloudy that is. So you want it more like the clear one, and that's why you don't, you don't always get the very little bit at the bottom. So, but it's still drinkable. I'm going to let that settle for a couple days, and then I'll just pour it out real slowly, and that way all the sediment will still be in the bottom of the bottle. I like to use a flashlight with the dark bottles because you can see through them better when you're filling it up. So you know when you got it full. Otherwise, it gets a little tricky. I think you guys should be able to see how, how clear that is now with the light shining through it. I can tell real easy where the level is, the water level. Or in this case, fermentation level. All right, guys, this is strawberry wine that we did. It's been in there for like six months in the closet fermenting. So. I'm real curious to see what's going on here. I haven't opened it one time since I started it, um, and the pressure is starting to decrease now, and there's not a lot of bubbling, so I think this is done. I'm so excited. So here we go. We're going to open it together. Let's see what it looks like. And I have never used the lid before. You can tell I've never taken it off. This is proof because the ring up from the lid is still on it. The unveiling! This is exciting! Oh, that 
smells amazing. Amazing. I think it's ready to go. Very exciting. So any contamination that gets into the bottle while you're while you're bottling um, is going to be affected by the pH of the fermented solution. So as long as you've got good alcohol content in it, the, the pH of that alcohol ferment will keep the mold spores or any kind of floating spores like trichoderma. It'll, it'll actually kill all these things as soon as it makes contact. As long as the acidity is correct, it should be, um, you know, it should be to the point where it can kill bacteria, which I believe is around 4.3 or so. But, um, but we'll see. I mean, these are, I'm learning as well, guys, so just throwing it out there at you. So once we get the alcohol in the bottle without putting air through the solution, so once we get alcohol in the bottle without putting air into the solution using the wand, really the only thing we need to worry about is the acetobacters that, are, that get in when you shake the bottle up or get air into the solution, uh, the fermented liquid. So uh, really we don't need to worry about mold spores as much or contamination being on top as long as we have a good alcohol content in the bottle when we're bottling. Um, but we do need to worry about air, so oxygen. We don't want to oxygenate the, the liquid because the acetobacters are already in our ferment. So in our, our fermented solution here and in these bottles, the, the acetobacter bacteria are already in here. So at that point, as long as you don't add oxygen to it, you're not activating them. So we're not, we're not turning this into vinegar because we're using the wand that will reduce oxygen into the solution. Um, and because we haven't shaken anything up, uh, because we're not pouring it, um, basically just not oxygenating it. So as long as you understand the concept of oxygenating liquid and the many ways we can do that, um, then you'll be fine and your ferments will come out wonderful. So we started out getting about 50-50, you know, when we first started a few years ago. Uh, and now it's turned into we might have one bad, bad bottle out of, a, at, like, out of all these that we've done maybe one or two bottles might go bad because we left a little bit of the, the yeast residue. So what I'm doing guys is I'm putting it in a carboy because there was too much sediment in the line. Although this actually looks really clear. I might switch back and start doing a couple more bottles here. Yeah, that looks clear. That's good. Nice and clear. Oh, no. More sediment. Yeah. All right. Gonna put a, a whole bottle in here. And then that way this can separate a little bit more. And I'll take it from the carboy and put it in a bottle another day. But for now, we've got one bottle to try. That's exciting. Woo! Yeah, but the rest of this has way too much sediment in it, so definitely need to separate it one more time after this. These are bottles that didn't get used, so I'm putting them back on the shelf. But before I do it, I want to make sure I get a little more star sand in it because I already cleaned out all the star sand um, to get them ready to be bottled and just didn't need them. So this is how I put them back on the shelf to make sure that contamination doesn't form. Because anytime you have water or moisture in a closed environment with very little bit of gas exchange, even a little bit that gets through the, the top of this, um, you can have mold start to form. So, that's how we put them right back on the shelf, just like that. And here we go. Tom Sapp, Permaculture Wilmington. Have a great day.